Today we are converting this 55 gallon stand to hold a 90 gallon tank. So the main difference is that the new tank is 18 and a half inches wide, which is five and a half inches wider than this stand. So what I want to do is add a shelf part to the back here to carry the additional load. And then I am going to run some legs to the bottom to tie it together. And then I am going to add another shelf about here for a filtration system that we are going to be building for this tank and then adapting to our other tanks. So initially it's going to look a little weird, but it will make sense down the road. So that's the goal for today, and we'll go from there. So first of all, I want to get some wood cut up, and then we're going to install it on the back. So on the back side of the cabinet, I am going to add a 2x4 to the 2x6 here and to the cabinet, just to give it some structure on both ends so the legs don't kick out when we move the cabinet around and it adds all the support that we need. So that's the next step. Caesar, you come in to investigate to make sure everything is up to spec. Yes, is everything up to spec? Okay, buddy, can you back up? No, not everybody needs to see you. Okay, so we have it's bad Caesar. So we have the 2x6 shelf on the back, tied in with two 2x6 two legs, and then the 2x4 stubs just securing everything to the back of the tank. So it's all, the stand is now all one piece, it's not going anywhere. So now it's wide enough for our next tank to go on here. And then I am going to add some legs to the back with another shelf. Okay, so we have added two kickouts on the one side, and we're going to repeat on this side, and then we can stick our two by fours up here to carry the next shelf. Okay, so we've got the shelf added to the back of the 55 gallon stand so it can take the bigger tank, and now we've got our posts or to carry the next shelf. So uh, this is the next shelf that goes in and the tank will sit there. So once we get it set up, we'll have to show you what that looks like. Okay, so we have it in its finished location. Probably gonna kick the bottom out a little bit more, but that's the goal for right now. And next we'll bring the tank up and get that set in place. I got the camera in one hand and the net in the other, and I'm going to see if I can catch this goldfish. And still film. These tanks are the same temperature. Look at that, one-handed. So the two goldfish are now together. It wasn't that hard. And I'm gonna put the lid back on to make sure there's no jumpers. The two little friends are now together, which leaves this tank empty with all the sponge filter and a few others. So I'm now gonna grab a stool. I think I might need both hands for this, but well, let's see if I can see him. He's right there, trying to hide in that cave. He's very stealthy. And now up here. Now let's see if I can to do this one-handed because he is sleeping so let's see how hard this is going to be and he's realized what i'm trying to do yeah i might have to put the camera down okay i picked up the cave that he was in ah oh, let's go i caught him ah oh. Water everywhere. 
Right in we go. So he's a little stretched out now that I just moved him, but he's gonna be just fine. And the little golf shooter side. That now leaves this 60 gallon open. So now it's the challenge of getting a little bucket and catching everyone that's in here. Wish me luck. I'm gonna go find a little bucket. Help me, MPV is so. Once I get all the fists into the buckets, these individual buckets are gonna be for a different species. I will show them to you, and then I will show them being added in here. Because these, this tank and this tank are the same temperature, same source of water, everything should be the same. So it's a simple move. Now to catch them, which is the challenging part. I'm gonna see if I can film while doing it. One bucket of water. Two bucket of water. Now let's see here. Three bucket of water. And these fissies. I'm gonna turn off the camera while I try to grab them. This is the 11 angels that I have. I'm trying to push the lid back so I can, um, yeah, there we go. Push the lid back. Been out waiting for a little bit. So I think I caught all 11. I'm gonna have to count. Probably not. One, two, three, Four, five, there's still five in there, which is ten. So there's still one more pesky angel hiding somewhere. Let me see if I can dump these guys out. Oh, there they go. And there also goes the lid. I'm going to go in there and grab that lid. But first, you can see some of the angels are over there, some of them are over here. They're all doing good. This little dude's like, why am I in here? I just wanted to go to bed. Yeah, I'm gonna grab the lid. Been draining this. It's been drained about this much for a couple days. And this heater was well, completely submerged. But my dad got zip tie happy and he zip tied it all up trying to get rid of the wire monster. And I got home and the exposed part was incredibly hot and it was starting to smoke a little bit. So luckily I got home in time. And then also I just got some more water. So let me see if I can catch the rest of these guys. This is gonna take forever, isn't it? And I, yeah, I added the pirate ship in there, and there's a bunch of fish already hiding in it. Here are the few fi next fish that I could actually catch. I had to drain the tank even more to catch these fast suckers. But you can see a few couple ball loaches, some bristle nose, um, a fire mouth that just swam out, a red pleco, um, a clown pleco, some super red bristle nose. There goes one. You can see another one that just went there. There's a few other fish that I caught in there in here. But that's the majority. And because when you get new fish in a new tank, they get stressed out. So I have this blue light that can come on. This is what I'm going to leave on right now. Or I'm going to turn it completely off, which is what I'm going to do. Because fish get stressed out when they get moved. So they're all now in here breathing a little heavy. But I'm now going to leave them while I finish training this tank. And there's a bunch of snails in here, a bunch of these mystery snails. Um, there's some blue ones, gray ones, some yellow ones. And then there's some assassin snails, some pond snails, a few other species, some ram's horns. So I'm gonna try to catch all of these snails out. And then, I am going to move them into the 60 with all the other guys. And then I am going to, oh, there's some moss in here. I forgot my thought. And then I'm gonna clean this tank out, get all the gravel out, get everything out, get the heater out. And then I'm going to be moving it upstairs. So I am down here now. 
it is late at night, so they are sleeping. And I'm now going to catch them out. I moved them upstairs, and then my mom came down. She wanted a few other fish from down here. So I'm going to catch those out, put them in a five-gallon bucket, and pick up the camera when I'm releasing them. I have just got the two buckets of gravel out of the bottom and some sand as well. And then, this is the 90-gallon tank. Kind of almost completely empty. You know, there's a little bit on the bottom. But it's basically empty. I can hose it down later. But it's now ready to get moved. I have just added a layer of gravel into the bottom, the sponge filter, the heater. And I brought the light up as well. And the tank's up here. And I'm about to add some water, scrub off some hard water stains, get it nice and clean. And completely fill it up. And then I'm going to turn the heater on, get up to temp, dechlorinate it, and then bring the fish up. Here is the 90 gallon aquarium. And it is now filling up. I'm using a little clear moving box that you saw earlier to hold the water as it fills in so it doesn't disturb the gravel because this gravel probably has some detritus in it. And now the sponge filter is going. As you can see, detritus. And there's a uh, my heater, detritus. There's onion food and this poop that then causes ammonia, and the ammonia is then eaten by nitrifying bacteria, which is what feeds the cycle to keep the fish alive. The tritus, yes, and there are the tritivores that eat the tritus. The, some things aren't chocolate that eat the tritus, some things aren't. Bacteria is a tritivore, some isopods, and Springtails are also the tritivores. Uh, good bacteria or bad bacteria? Yes, the good bacteria is what we were cultivating in the sponge filter. So that's beneficial? Yes, beneficial for the aquarium. All new world for the fishies. Here they go. Oh, <laughs> There's 11 angels in here. Um, five albino quarries, one fire mouth, three bristle nose, one clown pleco, one red parrot, don't go, a bunch of snails, two of them decided they're never going to let go. I pulled them off. There's two bigger mystery snails. You can see some angels in the back there. All doing good. I'm going to go get the loaches that are still in there. Um, the one more albino quarry cat and a few other fish that are downstairs that I have yet to try to catch because they are being incredibly annoying. I'm back upstairs and here are five diamond tetras, one glow light tetra, one neon tetra, and a couple female bronze corridors. Here they go. All into their new tank. Hopefully, the bristlenose will breed in here. I had did some caves for them. I ran. See the snails have regrouped. They're on the side of the tank now. Yeah. Everyone's doing okay now. The two loaches are still hiding in there. Um, the fire mouth took this cave as his. I'm going to turn off the lights now. So you turn off the lights so it's easier for them to adjust to a new place? 